if you get infected that's not the end of the world because for some people who are able to retrieve the sperm so you retrieve it directly from the testes and then do other methods of assisted reproduction like artificial insemination or in some cases if necessary IVF that's in vitro fertilization What's up beautiful people? Welcome to another exciting episode of TTC Diaries with Dr. O. You already know. Mm -hmm. And today I have something interesting to discuss. So we are pretty much continuing from where we stopped last week. You know, last week we talked about five reasons why you may not be getting pregnant. I remember at the beginning of the video I said something about how getting pregnant has a lot of factors involved. Some of them depend on you while some depend on your partner. So today we are going to be talking about reasons why your partner may not be able to get you pregnant or if you are the partner watching, reason why you may not be able to get your partner pregnant. So sit back, relax and enjoy. So one of the things that might be preventing some men from getting their partners pregnant is infections. Yes, yeah, love to say infections. Can infection um, cause infertility and all that? Yeah, certain infections can actually make you infertile or make it difficult for you to impregnate your spouse. What type of infections are we talking about, right? Any infection that affects, so genital tract infections, so any infections that possibly affects your testes because that's where the sperm is, is stored, so like orchitis, right? That can cause infertility. Any infection that affects the passage through which sperm will pass, for example, epididymitis, that's what is such a tongue twister, yeah. That can make you infertile because obviously if sperm cannot pass through, you are producing sperm, but sperm is not able to pass through, so you can't ejaculate the sperm, then you're going to be infertile because there's nothing to fertilize the egg with, right? Other types of infections that could cause this are certain types of sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea or even HIV, right? That's why you need to try as much as possible to protect yourself from infections because they could actually affect your fertility. If you get infected, that's not the end of the world because for some people who are able to retrieve the sperm so you retrieve it directly from the testes and then do other methods of assisted reproduction like um, artificial insemination or in some cases if necessary IVF that's in vitro fertilization right but you know it's just easier if you can conceive naturally it saves you money it saves you time it saves you stress it saves you having to take drugs and go through medical procedures make sure you prevent yourself from getting infections genital tract infections sexually transmitted infections to preserve your fertility as a man so another thing that can prevent you from getting your partner pregnant as a man is something that we call ejaculation issues right so for example when you have an orgasm and you ejaculate the sperm is supposed to be released outside of your body right through your urethra so there's a passage which we call the urethra that's where the sperm is supposed to pass through but in people that have retrograde ejaculation so retrograde just means it's going backwards so in people that have retrograde ejaculation instead of the ejaculate to go out of their body like ejaculate contains sperm semen and other things so instead of it to, to go out of their body is actually going back and it's going back into the bladder right so you can see the sperm that is supposed to fertilize your partner's egg is going back into your bladder right so you can see that that's going to put you in a very dicey situation and you're going to have issues getting your partner pregnant, right? And what are some of the things that can cause this retrograde um, ejaculation? Some of them might be surgery. Surgery to the prostate gland, surgery to your urethra, and certain types of injuries to your spine could also cause this retrograde ejaculation. If you find out that you've not been able to get your partner pregnant for a while and you've done tests and your partner is fine, doctor certifies that your partner is okay, then you need to check yourself. Of course, when we're checking for if a man is okay, there are many things we check for, right? And one of these might be retrograde ejaculation. Once make sure that you're actually ejaculating sperm and you're actually not ejaculating backwards, right? That's one of the things they check after they check the series of other things. In another video, I'm going to talk about things to check for, like how to determine if a man is fertile. So certain tests that your doctor may do. One of the major tests which everybody knows is sperm. They check your sperm count, they check quality of your sperm. But that's not the topic of today. So I'm going to talk about that in a separate video. If not, this video is going to get too long. So let's focus. Other reasons why your man may not be able to get you pregnant or why you may not be able to get your partner pregnant as a man. Another thing that might be preventing you from getting your partner pregnant if you have something called anti-sperm antibodies. Okay, so let me break down the big grammar for you. You know when your body is exposed to infections or there are microorganisms that invade your body and all that, so virus, bacteria, fungi, parasites generally, 
your immune system kicks into play and produces antibodies to fight these infections like like i explained in one of my videos where i talked about all you need to know about lupus you can check that video out it's going to be in health service playlist so basically your body produces antibodies that kicks and fight against all the infections when it comes to anti-sperm antibodies right anti-sperm antibodies exactly how it sounds these antibodies are fighting against sperm so this Olodo antibodies, they mistakenly identify sperm as a potential infection of foreign body and they start to fight against the sperm. So you can imagine you producing sperm and your body is fighting against it. You know when an antibody fights again against microorganisms, what does it do? It doesn't smile with it, it destroys it. So you can imagine that you are producing sperm and your own body is destroying the sperm that you are producing. Like what kind of thing is this? Eh? So anyway, that's what we um, call anti-sperm antibodies being produced and if you happen to fall into this category doctor is going to do some tests and check to make sure there are tests you can do to make sure that you don't have anti-sperm antibodies basically not only men can have these anti-sperm antibodies women as well can produce anti-sperm antibodies so this normally happens if women are allergic to semen right so semen is the fluid that you ejaculate that contains sperm as well and other products so basically if your partner is somehow allergic to this semen her immune system will produce antibodies against the semen and the sperm as a whole and even though you're ejaculating sperm peacefully into her guess what her immune system is going to start destroying this um, sperm so it's just ruining all your efforts so one thing you can do if you have anti sperm antibodies of course you need to go and see your doctor to do the test to detect another and when it's detected for men there are drugs that they can give them to suppress their immune response to this sperm so that the immune system will not be able to destroy the sperm and for women one treatment that usually helps is doing artificial insemination so they will have to inject the sperm directly into their uterus as your womb so that the sperm will avoid contact with the cervical mucus right that contains those antibodies that are destroying the sperm so they just bypass that and inject it straight into your womb so you are able to fertilize the egg and get pregnant right so that's one point you should consider so another reason why your partner may not be getting you pregnant or why you may not be getting your partner pregnant is if when you are small you had a condition called undescended testicles so when um boys are born right before birth or shortly after birth their testicles are supposed to descend down into their scrotum so their scrotum is that sac that hangs down for some baby boys this their testicles does not descend down into their scrotum so it stops somewhere along the line maybe stop somewhere in their groins or even up above in their abdomen right and it might happen on one side or both sides now men that usually have this issue if it's left untreated at that young age they have a higher chance of infertility just because if you notice the scrotum has a particular temperature it's normally cooler than the rest of the body and test this that contains the sperm are supposed to be stored under a certain temperature condition so the temperature in the abdomen or the groins where it stops descending into is much warmer than the temperature in the scrotum so the high temperature will destroy the sperm cells that are being formed so it's very important that male children are checked for undescended testes right that's one of the checks they do after you give birth to your baby boys so that if it's not descended then they need to do um, a surgery to bring those testicles down to the right place which is the scrotum men that have undescended testes that was never treated they have a higher chance of infertility because their sperm cells are at risk of getting destroyed and the last reason which i want to talk about today why your partner may not be getting you pregnant or why you may not be getting your partner pregnant is if you have sexual problems so sexual problems you can win from anything for some people number one sexual problem that a lot of men have is erectile dysfunction so they're not even able to achieve an erection and then some can achieve but they can't maintain an erection so if you can't achieve an erection you can't maintain an erection then you cannot obviously have intercourse to get to the point where you ejaculate some have premature ejaculation so they are so hyper aroused that even before they penetrate their partner they've already ejaculated so they don't get the chance to ejaculate inside of their partner and they can't get their partners pregnant i have a lot of videos where i talked about premature ejaculation the causes ways to deal with this like i already explained some of the causes are physical so something wrong with the reproductive system while others are psychological so anxiety d depression relationship problems right so if your partner is suffering from this first of all you need to be very supportive because 
like I always say, a supportive partner goes a long way in solving this problem. So you need to be very supportive of your partner, right? And then you need to be patient because this problem doesn't go overnight, especially if it's a psychological problem. You have to work with your partner to get through it. So if it's anxiety, if it's depression, if you guys are having problems in your relationship, you have to work together to fix it, right? So that your partner can achieve an erection, right? And maintain an erection for however long is necessary to be able to get you pregnant. Like I said earlier, there are many other reasons why your male partner may not be able to get you pregnant, but I just talk about these five reasons because they are very, very common reasons why men are not able to impregnate their wives or their partners, right? If you have heard of any more reasons that I haven't mentioned, you can write down in the comment section down below, let's discuss. If you feel like your partner is um, being affected by some other reasons that I've not discussed, you can also write it down below. If your partner has experienced any of these things I'm talking about, you need to seek medical help as soon as possible. If you enjoyed watching this video so far, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe and share with anyone you think might need to see this. Like I always say, you are not alone on this journey to motherhood. Just keep your eyes on the prize and your baby will be here sooner than you think. See you next week. Mm -hmm.